Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Let me tell you something right now. If you are listening to us on any day other than a Monday, I'm not going to lie to you, suck my dick. Because I want you to understand that we work really hard to get this podcast out on Mondays, on time. And you tell us to wait. You tell us to fucking wait. You need to do better. I'm setting boundaries going forward. Setting boundaries in the relationship between us and our listeners. You're going to start treating us fucking better. Marquise, is not funny. Just, you're right. Ryan, this is not funny. It's not laughing matter. It's Ryan, not. I need, my, I need my bread. I'm fighting for our life. We give you a good episode, a great episode. We, get, a we work hard. A couple great episodes a week. We and work you know, damn hard. Bills is only going higher. Bills is only getting higher. There's the COVID tax. The COVID tax is, is, is it's taxing. We paying. Outside is expensive. Very. It costs you $100 per hour to be outside of New York. And you know where we be at? In the studio. In the studio. With y'all. <laughs> For y'all. And you tell us to wait. I want you to look inside yourself. I want you to ask yourself, are you worth it? How about this? If you wa- normally watch it or listen on a Wednesday or Thursday, just move it up one day. Move it back one day. Mm. We get we get we get progress communication. We've mm. been working on this compromise. Yes, compromise. You know, but not. Mm-mm. We are not Mm-mm. going to what? What's what's the word of the day? Uh, what, what was the word of the last week? Um, we're not going. We're to, not going to uh, settle. Settle. There we go. We're not going to settle. What I was looking for. We're not going to settle. But compromise is cool. We'll you compromise. Know? We'll negotiate. Meet us compromise. halfway. If you go Thursday, we on Monday. Come Tuesday night. Tuesday night. <laughs> That's the least you could do. Tuesday That's night. Tuesday night. Sorry. Motherfucker. But we here. You know. Shout out to all you Kimmy Giblers and Hakeem Campbell. Don't think I ain't see y'all sneak in either. Um, make sure you head over to patreon.com backslash guys next door pod. If you're gonna bootleg our shit, at least send it to your friends. At least. <laughs> Do right by us. Please. I I don't mind. It's like Netflix. I don't mind if it's a bunch of y'all on the same Patreon. Account. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't mind. Yeah, you only get one piece of merch, but yeah. yeah. That's up to y'all to yeah. figure that shit out. <laughs> Whoever we cut it in four. <laughs> Whatever y'all do. Whatever. But we appreciate y'all, like always. Um, glad to see y'all are back. Glad to see we are back. That's another week. Another week. Another blessing. Another blessing. Another another breath of air we get. Another good fit. Another great fit. We got the legs out. I ain't, I ain't bring. I ain't bet put the legs out today. I will. Legs, is, it's summertime, man. I can't really, you can't do this year round. I mean, I can, can. But a lot of people can't. <laughs> so I like to show my legs while I can for the people that are around can feel more Connected to me because they're like, I can wear shorts. I, all sold out. I mean, were you the were you the final purchase? I I, re- I don't really go to the store. Uh huh. Well. Store comes to me. Shout out my nah. Shout out, you know who you are. Appreciate the plug you. Shall remain plug, anonymous. The plug will always <laughs> remain anonymous, but they always be fresh ees on deck for your boy at a nice price of retail. <laughs> <laughs> what's an over What's an oversell to a real nigga? I seen people paying three hundred. Yeah, nah, two fifty. Not, not 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 when not shows not when shows retail for one twenty. Ninety. Yeah, I wish I would. They're a hundred dollars after it's like one no. I don't know one like one eleven one eleven after Maybe. tax. I mean, I don't know. I, I just clean buck. They say hold my this, way. They hold this down. Hold this down. <laughs> and I'm good. But yeah, enough about my shorts and my fantastic uh, life. Um, collage of clothing. Collage of collage. clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Great collage. Great collage. It's like a, it's like art. I find my fits to be like art. I'm a very green person. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm big on the green. Um, green is my favorite color. If y'all ever want to send me anything, um, if you ever want to do right by me, green is just my shit. Um, forest green, um, mint green. That's my favorite color. Forest. For- yep, forest green. Crazy thing I'm is I have sorry. a cousin. Shout out to him. His name is Forest Green. Last name green, first oh, name forest. Oh, you spell it with an E at the end? Yep. Two R's? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, and his sister's name is Jasmine Green, so they're just like crayons. Oh, they, yeah, the yeah. Crayola box. But but green has just always been my thing. Like I know, watch green, shoes green, green. It's headphones wherever they at. They're green. It's just a sign of um, it's groundedness. It's yeah. money. Don't got to be envious, but you got the positive. See what I'm saying? I'm an English teacher. I See what I'm saying? Works. English teacher. I didn't even notice <laughs> okay, about you, dog. I didn't even open the door. <laughs> but the fact that you are here with us now speaks volumes about my green conversation. Sky's green in here at least over my head. head. I can't speak for everybody else, but green is just always around me. Has nothing to do with money. It just has to do with life and joy and 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 that's growing. Right. I feel like green is, is a big thing when it comes to growing, and I'm still growing, so that's why green will forever be my 
favorite yeah, color. Growth, fertility, all of that. New absolutely, life, absolutely. New what it doesn't bring is Popeyes. I don't understand I, that shit. Don't know but you know, about. um, some people do. We're I don't know. About, we're talking about companies. If that anything, why are you got, talking about companies that don't pay us? But I'm trying to say, if anything, we're gonna go um, wing stop with the thighs. I heard they got the new thighs. You tried those? No, it was down the street from my apartment. You gonna try it? I know you gonna try it. You gonna try the thighs? Wingstop needs to start adding shrimp so the pescatarians could partake. Well, you gotta call up your man Ross. That's your man. I don't. I wish I, I knew him. I don't know. Oh, we Ross. Rose my man said he needs shrimp on the menu. Need the shrimp. Need the shrimp on the shrimp menu. Shrimp breaded up. I need Not lush, too deep I fried. Need the mm. shrimp. Maybe if you do the grill, fried nah, because they do all the fried. Maybe the grilled shrimp would be too much, huh? Nah, that's no, perfect. They could do it. I mean, I'll be they could perfect for you, but my man Ross. Yeah, you know, it's probably not economically sound. Mm-mm, fried nope. up. I'm eat it. Fry it up. Fried and died up. Fry, fried, died and mm. turn to the side. Turn, lay whatever you want to go, but it's on the side. <laughs> Shout out to all listeners, man. The fact that y'all listen to us every week, it's, it still is uh, amazing. It's still a feat. It's like, yo, y'all really listen to us? And like, especially when you're in the studio and you take part, right? You, you're like, yo, we're really like just talking shit for the first time. Especially when we, our COVID wasn't the greatest. I mean, everybody Y'all rocked with us days. through COVID, and our specifically was really some fucking ragtag. It was some shit. Held by duct tape. I apologize for shit. all the, the bad content we were giving you. But oh, that's, we didn't give y'all bad content. It just didn't look. It just yeah, didn't it didn't. Look I'm sorry, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Visually bad content. Just because we were in three different places, literally, two different three countries, different countries, t- three different time three zones. Three different time zones. And it was just enough for us to keep the ball rolling. But now, as you see, the kingdom. Sky Daddy has spoken. Sky Daddy has spoken. New Shout landlords have opened the door. And we are here. Shout out to our motherfucking engineer, Rob. Clap it up for Rob. Everybody clap, 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 clap it up for clap, Rob. Clap, clap, clap. Y'all will be hearing a lot about Rob because Rob is a real nigga. He type, he type engineer we can really ride with. Nigga, Rob. Shit. Yeah, Rob, Rob. You, come, you, you don't let you come in and watch the game? Can't make it. All right. Rob can't make it. But guess what? I, I he's actually, here now. I actually, take, take, take everything I just said back. No, nah, no. Nah, he's here. The way, he, the way he said I can't make it. He could have like said... <laughs> I can make it, and he and didn't front. have to make this. You know what? I give back everything I said. I give back everything Shout I said. Rob. Shout out to Rob. Just you know, I found out Rob's from the Bronx. Really? So yeah. That's why the hat makes sense. Ah, stick to it. And he's all about telling niggas, you know what they say out there. <laughs> he throw, they, they throw the they frank. Throw the frank if, you thought I, if you thought <laughs> I threw the frank niggas they in the invented, Bronx. They invented Wait, the they invent, Olympic they sport the of stand. throwing they the frank. They built the frank stand. It was it was built in front of Yankee Stadium, so it's only the, right. I already know the nigga Nathan. The nigga Nathan is from the Bronx. It's from Grand Concourse. That's on my mother, I know maybe. He is. Where are you from in the Bronx? That's where he's from. Oh. <laughs> Nathan is definitely oh. from Southview. Southview. That is, that is a dark friend. Southview. That's a very dark friend. <laughs> they is throwing them shit. Southview. Vicious. Yeah, Southview is definitely giving uh, Frank no bun. Yeah, definitely no, no dress, not dressed up, not dressed naked, Frank. But but naked in the pocket, like it come, it might come out like, fully hey, dressed. Up like yo, up? yo, shut up. That's Speak. the first thing they go to. But it's all right. He's on our side. Yo, what's good? Suck my dick. Oh, yeah. oh my god, my bad. My oh, fault. Oh my god, my fault. My yeah. room, you know, Rob Mac. He from he's the from the Bronx. And the first thing he when it gets to that boiling level of Frank, Frank of, open of yes. That was that was play on play on words. You see what I did there? Not ocean open. Frank, Frank open. open. Wow. The Frank stand is definitely open. Right. When Rob Max in town, he's definitely he doesn't care. We gotta keep Rob and Rob away from each other. They do. Wow, that's crazy. They might know each other. They probably do. Probably Everybody do. Everybody in the Bronx knows each other. That's a fact. Care what part you're from. One Nigga degree of separation Burnside. of the Frank stand. <laughs> it's one. It's one Frank, <laughs> one Frank away. stand away. One Frank of separation. Uh, only thing they really come together with is the Yankees. Six, six <laughs> to Frank. Six to Franks of separation. They can kill each other all day, but when it comes to the the Yankees, <laughs> so Yankees like what you you got a mess at something like this. <laughs> Yo, beat that nigga. All right, no problem. See, you see what I'm saying? But um, but but yeah. shout, out to all, shout out to the neighborhood. That's really what we was getting at. All this Frank talk is really shouting out our listeners. We appreciate the the listeners. We appreciate pre appreciate what what the fuck did I just say? You're trying to make appreciate it. Uh, uh, we I, right, appreciate's not a yeah, thing. It's, it's not uh, a thing. Hey, Marquise, do you want just to. remember whose side you on. I remember. Um, thanks. Uh, make new words. Appreciate our listeners. Appreciate the neighborhood. Make sure you subscribe. Guys next door. Podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, but if you listen on Apple specifically, then please hit the subscribe, hit the uh, five stars, give us a nice comment. We might read it on air. Give us five stars. Why? Because we're children and we need validation. Therefore, we're asking for it. Five stars, just like you would give your funky ass Uber driver or your Lyft driver or your Uber Eats driver. Yeah, because I don't know. I don't know what we can't do anything to your food, but like, I'll just talk like this if y'all don't give us enough five stars. 
and y'all be pissed the fuck off. Okay, so do that. Also, make sure you follow us on all social media platforms, Guys Next Door Podcast. Um, and if you have a let, well, we'll tell you about how to write a letter later on. Let's get into this episode. It's a real fun episode. Um, so I was actually at the bank um a few days ago, and I was waiting in line, and there was a black guy at the at the ATM, and behind me was a black guy, and you know the the black guy behind me was like, hey. You know, make sure make make sure y'all brothers leave some money in there for for the rest of us. You know, like the common, you know, the hater shit. Not hater, no. I I wouldn't. No, I don't know why you no, just jumped out like I that. I that. see what this type of <laughs> sorry, episode. Sorry, I see what's going triggers, on. Today. Triggers, 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 triggers. <laughs> Certain things that niggas say is yeah, just triggers. No, me. In, in very much the way black men compliment each other, like you know that that you know projecting wealth on one another. And so he sat there and we all laughed. And then I remember when the guy was done who was in front of me, he's probably my height. He walked away, and I was just like. Yo, you all done, big man? Appreciate you. And right in my head, I'm like, why did I just call him big man? Like, he's my height. And like, why Like, why did the other guy feel the need to, you know, even break the ice like that, right? Like, what was the need? We could all just sat here and just waited and been in our phones. But he did that. And I, I was like, what is the history behind the way we talk to each other? Like, okay. what, is the history, the, what is the history behind the way black men sp- speak to each other? So I reached out to a, a grapevine uh, cast me in mind, Ucheche. And I was like, yo, Chechi, who should I speak to? Like, I want to talk to a black male academia, you know, because, you know, we were speaking about how I hate some black, most black male academia. Um, but I was like, who can I speak to? And she was like, oh, well, this guy Marquise, he did the grapevine a few times. I was like, what? And Larice, I, was, I went to DM and I was like, oh, we've been in pictures together. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's cool. Right. That's right. Bring it uh, around. Bring it around. Bring let, it around. Me, let me reach out to Acknowledgement. him. So I, I, I hit him up. So Marquise made the trip from Philly yes. to, to chop it over there. So before you get into it, let the people know uh, what it is that you do, why you are the, the voice that's talking to us about this today. Hey. Uh, yeah, my name is Marquise, Marquise Davon across all socials. I'm the host of the Dear Reading podcast and also the um, Rational Anger podcast, which aims to break, bridge academia and the hood. So we mm. all right here together. Perfect. Um, <laughs> but I'm also an educator in the Philly, Philadelphia area as well. And I'm also an activist outside of here. So that's a little bit of what I do. Mm. Um, really focused on social justice education and also social emotional learning. So when you reached out, I was like, oh, I know this topic. Mm. I got to teach my kids about this kind of stuff. So we are trying to call so, so break So break down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So break wow. that down. Yeah. Break that down for the people who, you know, because I had never heard it before today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Socio emotional, emotional learning. Learning. Yeah. What is that? Um, so it's SEO for short, but basically it's teaching the kids um, emotional regulation, being able to understand your traumas and how it manifests in your body. Um, you also got um, racial identity that you're learning, figuring out how to build out like healthy relationships and find trusted adults or friendships and maintaining them. But then also like decision making skills, too. So I try to take more of a critical race approach to it because niggas in the hood, like the people on the stoop, they're also teaching this stuff like it's regular stuff that we do. So even like catching the grandma on the block and she's just like, don't be doing that or we can talk it out this way. That's SEO, but in the hood. But they just know, academics know how to, like, you know, let's research this and then make it all pretty and stuff. Uh, but basically, it's, like, conflict resolution with more of a formula-ish to it. Mm. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, I think that's why I think it's, you know, we spoke before. I was like, yeah, he'd definitely be able to, you know, shed some light on this. Articulate some words. So, before no, I ask him to, to, to jump in. <laughs> Don't say too many. I won't. It's fine. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm educated. In the, in the area of college He is not But I will say this I got through I passed I made it Oh I wasn't the biggest Big word guy uh-uh, that's the, <laughs> That was my whole issue When I got to college I said why is everybody Talking about like White supremacy Patriarchal capitalism I said y'all saying The system's fucked up It's all the same See and I need I need a nigga like you Next to me yeah. in class Cause I was just like Fuck this yeah. What's the answers? <laughs> like, I'm going to figure it out regardless. This is fucked up. Yeah, same thing. You see what I said? You said same thing. I needed like a, like the little bubbles at the bottom of the screen to show me like what the shit really yeah, is. Yeah, and I'd I be mad because I'm just like, stop speaking above everybody's head. Like, I talked to my dad and he's just like, all right, but when I came home from school, my older brother said, Marquise, I understand a word you just said. And I said, oh, I'm speaking above you. That's and not even like above because that sounds condescending. It does. It does. It does. does. You trying to use? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's the truth. It's the truth. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. But wherever I'm at, like wherever I'm at, there is a hierarchy, right? Like 
So wherever I'm at, I'm talking to you here, but you're here. Not to say there's anything wrong being here. Just you're spe- if you want to effectively communicate, like we you talked about last down. week, you got you to you you be able to come down to the lowest con- de- denominator. Yeah, that's a fact. So I just try to be cognizant of that because I'm just like, I'm working with Yeah, black like people. if you would have said that in the hood, nigga would have been like cognizant. They what? Said, what the yeah, fuck? Fact. Where I get that? that? I'm just trying and to be aware. And the crazy me? thing is, like, <laughs> for me growing up, it wasn't, and I don't mean to go off track, it wasn't like the words that I would use. Mm-hmm. It would just be the conversations I would have. Because mm-hmm. I would try to not use any words they didn't know. The nigga says, but the words I But the stuff that I would, talk about they just didn't understand yeah so then they put you in that hole of you think you smarter than everybody and it's like nah i don't am i, no, I just, do you I, I mean if you think so my biggest thing is when somebody asks me a question i ask you back they'd be like yo <laughs> you Socrates. think she look good do you think she looks good like why does it matter? He really does do like that. I, I i just got rather because i want you to really think about it like mm-hmm. Oh, you think you're smarter than everybody? Do you think I'm smarter than everybody? Yeah, they just project their insecurities potentially, exactly. or just like so. Instead of me answering shit, I'm just put it back on you and let you answer it. And then if that's what you think, then that's what you think. That's a fact. So before we get into it, Ryan, when when you think, what is your take or what is your outlook on the way black men greet each other, like the way we interact with each other with our words and our our actions when we don't typically know someone when we're like trying to break that ice? Um. For me, I feel like it's different. I feel like it's based on how you were raised and, and, and who put you in those situations. I was I don't like confrontation. So even when I walk through big crowds, um, excuse me, boss, pardon me, ma'am, excuse me, sir, pardon me. Like I do that and if you don't do it to me, I'll let you know. Like I'm a firm believer. If you you bump me, I'll grab your arm like you're the word, excuse me, boss. Like, and I'll tell you, I'll look you right in your eyes, no problems. I was like, yo. They're like, yo, my fault. I'm like, all right, cool. That's what it, or you, you didn't see the girl that you just pushed. Oh, I, I said, no, you didn't. So I'm big on that type mm-hmm. of shit. So when it comes to me communicating to somebody I don't know, and you know I've lived in so many places mm-hmm. that I had to learn how to communicate, especially with the people that look like me. Because mm-hmm. I don't want it to seem like I'm better or I'm, I'm, I'm higher, like you said, than anybody else. Or I'm looking down. I want it to always be an even playing field. So me breaking the ice is, isn't is hard for me at all. It's just like, I, you might look at me different. I might look at you different, which I, I don't. But let me just say something funny or let me just say something to where you know I'm not a threat or I'm not trying to do anything crazy in the back of your head that you might possibly believe. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for me to just be like, hey, Going to the elevator, how's your day? Everything good? Yeah, blessed, man. Highly favored. Mm. Glad you good, man. Peace. Have a great day. Bless your heart. And just off that, people are like, oh, okay, cool. I can, I can fuck with you. It don't just have to be the head nod or, right, right. or the mean mug. And it's like, right. yo, what, we all here for a reason. Or if somebody's got that look, I'm like, yo, man, what's up? I had a hard day, too. Tell me about yours, <laughs> baby. Like, what's up? Because we both black. Then I'll just reverse it. Like, oh, we both black men living in this fucked up world. If there's any way I can help, let's let's just let's just top it up. I actually got a podcast. I talk about mental and I and I'll break it down so it's not like I'm belittling you. I'm just telling you about my life, what hopefully makes you want to open up to me and then that whole we have an issue shit is gone. Mm. What is that? So so what you know in the history and, and knowing kind of how the the uh the the socialization works and yeah. all this, what is the history or get into some of the history behind the way black men greet each other? Yeah, um, I and again. feel free to be long winded because I'm about to do something I've never done. I'm about to self so camera trying. Yeah, eat to something. That's perfectly fine. Do what you need to do. I can be long winded. Guys, nah. it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> eating fried. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna just say you eat fried chicken. Oh, I'm gonna say you eat fried chicken. Both. I'm gonna just say it. Eat fried chicken. Like Everybody thought he was a pescetarian. Eat fried chicken. Popeyes. That's what he's doing. Yeah, so um, the history and the socialization of these black men. <laughs> Don't try to shut on the camera. That's just chicken strips. Those are chicken strips. <laughs> that is not. What shrimp you know look like that? That is a that is a, a strip of chicken. But yes, before we were interrupted by the chicken man, <laughs> not the chicken so. shrimp. Um, yeah, so basically, like if you even take it all the way back to like slavery and whatnot. Um, a lot of us had to communicate without ever speaking because it was either, oh, we're not going to, the um, slave master isn't going to be messing with us or they're going to reprimand us, whatever the case may be. Um, Is that so the origin you, of the head nod? No. No, 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 no. In my mind, I like to think it is I because think, I was I like, if we're going to communicate without like speaking... This is what that is. Yeah, like we look down. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Down. So this is really what it was. Again, they did step and all of that fun stuff. But I think like as um, time progressed, mm-hmm. 
when even when we think about integration and us not being in like heavily all black spaces anymore, that's really when we were just like, oh, we all up in this drawn together. Like we all got to deal with America. We all got to deal with like all this um, white supremacy, all of this kind of stuff. So even as we were being integrated, I now needed to be able to know that I saw you and you were as a safe space. Okay. Because if I wasn't, if you were not a safe space to me, so if you're not like not in your head back, I'm like, oh, you different. What's up with you? So you don't bang with us. <laughs> like to me, I'm like, oh, you want to separate yourself out from the rest, right? So as we're going through um, history, like in full black communities, yeah, there's parts of it where we want to be able to communicate certain things. Like I see you, we're both black. We're into this, even when you were telling your story in the beginning. Yeah, bro, we both black. That's what the head nod is essentially saying. Fact, like, I like, see you, um, and up, we're, we're struggling together, right? Mm-hmm. But um, as we are also thinking about how slavery went and what they were doing specifically to black men, they were emasculating us. We weren't able to, like, fully articulate our rage or our anger in the way that we wanted to, which is completely valid. Mm-hmm. But when you really look into it, that's why oftentimes if we're complimenting each other, it's wealth power ownership sexual domination it's one of those things we're probably complimented on so even when mouse was telling the story earlier you said all right don't take all the money you know what it like that's money was the inciting incident for that conversation to happen to break the ice um oh that's you you're talking to somebody else right you're talking about somebody else but you're like oh you own that woman other person whoever your partner is sometimes and it's just like a compliment but it's also a way to kind of communicate is it always a compliment though this is what I'm saying That's where my mind goes left And I, and I hate for it to go left Because I also get the compliments like Yeah you got all the bitches Or you getting all the money But it's like the way you say it to me It's like To the point where now Where people say stuff like I know you got all, I know you got all the, all the girls And I'm like yeah I do But what's the conversation now right. Or Yo Ra You got to get a lot of money Okay I'm getting a lot of money But Where's it? What What do right. you want to talk about? So I just embrace it because I feel like if I say no, if I keep saying no, then my blessings will be taken away, and I don't want to close that door in my life. So, but it's still whack when right. our people have to talk to us like that. Right. Like, where's all this and where's all that? Instead of just, and it's just the way you say it. In my mind, mm-hmm. you could, you could, yo, yeah, I see you gotta doing your thing. Like you, I see you really. That's right. a different way of saying it. Yo, with all the joy, it's like, yo, I see a negative on this, and I see like you really trying to big me up, like, oh, right, you see what's right. going on, and that's just my way of thinking about some t- uh, certain things sometimes. Yeah, but that John's all about like context too, yep. right? Like, if you a hand ass nigga, you can stay over there. Like, Facts. that's good. Facts. At the end of the day, Facts. that's what it's gonna be, Facts. right? Um, but then also at the same time, sometimes people just don't know how to communicate exactly what they are trying to say mm-hmm. to you either. Just bad like, that's the skills. thing. Oftentimes, I'll say for black men to black men. It's hard to either just give like a straight compliment. It's hard to just be able to say, yo, I hope you're having a great day. Because oftentimes, like I said, we communicate non-verbally nine times out of ten mm-hmm. or we use a joke to break the ice. So at the end of the day, I can't go up to you and be like, yo, I hope you're having a great day. What made you smile today? You good? Like that kind of stuff. It's hard. It's hard to do because you're just like, oh, am I going to approach them? Am I gonna, Are they going to think something of me differently? So like if you really get into like all the extra academia and theory and stuff like some of it's rooted in like homophobia internalized some of it can be not even internalized just homophobia in general some of it's like oh i gotta be hyper masculine and perform and i mean that's growing up like if you grew up in the hood like that's how you have to move you got to be hard in a certain kind of way so to soften up around other people the way that we grow up you're yeah. in two different worlds yeah, we, right? ju- we just talked about that that whole perception of being hard pause or soft and it's like no, you just did it right there. You just a pause in the middle of that, right? I, I know like, exactly. See, yeah, like that's difficult. It, it, it I, I do it because I mean I, I'm from New York and that's just us. But I get I get exactly yeah. what you're saying. But for me, it's more of, I mean I can say soft pause too. So for me, it wasn't a it, <laughs> like it, for me it wasn't like yo like uh, the masculinist. Nah, it wasn't that. Yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. it was just uh you know. Just what I was saying, I but it, yeah. when we were talking about uh, last week, we were talking about tough love and mm-hmm. how there it, we broke it down like there's no such thing as tough love, and mm-hmm. we feel like when somebody calls you soft, it's always a negative feeling behind the word soft. When actuality, like love is soft, right? Love is not supposed to be hard. Like so, we're being brainwashed basically by by looking at people that are some of our peers and some of our, our people above us that just look that are we look up to mm-hmm. that make it seem like. Being hard is 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 what you got to be, and being soft yeah. is what you don't want to be. So right. I totally understand what you mean when you say that. 
Yeah, and I think it's also just interesting, too, because I had to, like, even just for, like, personal context, like, I met my father for the first time two years ago. He got out of prison, and he was just like, oh, it's been 24 years inside. (laughs) So we had to kind of start redefining what our relationship looked like because I was like, I'm 25, got a full-time job, got benefits, I got all these things. You 46, 47, we got and you. we got to learn how to figure out, like, it's not necessarily a father-son dynamic. Man, when I Everything. tell you, you ever watched the, the OG with uh, Tiffany? Man, I think that I, was him. He had to figure out, like, how, yeah, how yeah, the automatic see, doors see, work. Yeah. <laughs> it's mesh. I mean, <laughs> 20, 24, 25 different. years locked up and coming out to... Yes, coming out. He was like, oh, coming out now, yo, bro. You not you not a mic. You back there, bro. Appreciate your time, though. Appreciate you. But, but yeah, he I had get to it. I mean, stuff out. that's a whole another another world. He came out to not even another world. Two more worlds he yeah. didn't know about. Like twenty four years now, coming out in two thousand twenty. You got locked up in what ninety seven. Yeah, that, that is like. The epitome of right. I don't know what the fuck is going on out here. Yeah. And hopefully somebody can show me. And luckily he has somebody. I don't know how close y'all are getting. Yeah. But luckily he has at least a person to reach out to that. But that's what that, that's what it was. Cause like he greeted me in a way that black men don't originally like greet each other all the time. And I was just like, how was oh. that? So like immediately it was just like a, I looked at him, I said, Oh, that's my, well, I was looking down. I'm taller than him. But <laughs> Damn, Pop. Uh, <laughs> I was like, it was like Yo, shut up. Look, I, <laughs> um, but it was immediately like an embrace, right? But then it was also just like, uh, yo, I, I see the man that you are. I appreciate like who you grew up to be, even like the exchange of letters and whatnot. And so that was like interesting because right away I was just like, oh, I said he was 24 years. A third of that was in the hole. I said, I don't know how he's going to act. Am I going to be like. So be, what's good? How you doing? Like, it's gonna be a stern like, handshake. It's gonna be a hug. Yeah. It's gonna be a reach for a handshake. You got a hug. You don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, but it was in dope because for him, he completely navigated his male relationships completely different, like men to men, um, father to son, all that kind of stuff. Even his brother. So he was just like, yeah, I gotta be a different kind of man because what I was learning growing up was not it. I, Spending all that time with himself and having to do that internal work and having to do that. Yeah, he definitely had to grow into who he is. Like, yes, there's some things he dips into, like, old habit. But for the most part, like, yeah, he's definitely navigating his emotions a lot better. He navigates, like, how to maintain a conversation, compliments, Facts. all of that stuff. So uh, I also just learned from him at the end of the day. But I also recognize is, like, how I assumed we were supposed to kind of go because I had to shape, like, what masculinity was facts. for me. And that whole that whole shit is unlearning what you learned at first, and yeah. that that that's the biggest part of communicating with black people mm-hmm. is knowing that what you might have been taught early is not the right thing, right? And not everybody needs to go through a situation that like your father did, right. but um, there are certain situations that black people need to go through to understand that maybe what I was taught isn't right, and right. maybe there is another way about it that I could be better at life and better at communicating, better at loving, better at showing feelings and everything. Yeah, and that's we don't learn that. What they say, Jay Z put out four four four, and we're like, oh, this is a very emotionally intelligent album. Like right. you're really in there, right? But then it shouldn't take us till we're like forty seven, forty eight to like. We shouldn't that be out. this old. Yeah, unlearning shit that we should have never learned from the jump. And that's a fact. Um, so was, I think we shouldn't. Sure, but I mean, if you look at us as a people, we've been. I mean, it has. To, it, yeah, like we, we didn't really have too we have much a too much choice. choice. Like I mean, we have a choice now. Now we have a choice. Right, yeah. right. Because we make if, our if own anybody choices. our age. Doesn't come get doesn't come around until they're forty seven. Then you know, let's. But we know those people. You yeah. think so? Absolutely. Like there's people you Absolutely. think of right Absolutely. now that you know are still going to be thinking the same. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because yes. they don't. They're, there's they're, niggas you know, know that never left Brooklyn. There's one example right there. I'm just. I am just. You know, as as quote unquote mean or sharp or have people describe me when it comes to black men, especially our black brothers. I don't know. I, I'm just so. I'm never ready to just throw them out. No, you know what I mean. No. Unless you have no. shown yourself to be and I, thrown and out, and I don't yeah. say throw them out. So, but but, when, but I, so when I think of that, so when I say that, I'm talking about like, I hope that nobody we're around is thinking the same as they are in 24 years. Put it this way: How many people that live in the projects that can afford to move out the projects still live there? A lot. 25 years later 30 years later just because they're it's systematically correct in their mind like the rent is cheap i'm getting money i'm selling drugs i'm not getting caught but i'm, I'm still here can i live 
somewhere else and 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 make a better life for me? Yes. Maybe. Yes. No, it's not a maybe. Social media shows you guess. You see it every day where somebody if you haven't and I'm not talking about somebody who's unfinancially unstable. Like, yeah, unstable. I'm talking about yeah. somebody who's getting money mm -hmm. but they like just where they're at. They yeah. they 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 they're just comfortable. It's where also, it is. I think part it, and not but but and um I think it's also familiarity. Why like did you make that uh why did you make that um Why'd you decipher that? Why'd you make that separation? That clear the separation and between button, button and, but and because mm -hmm. I, I'm not negating his point at all. Like I'm not gonna do any that's of that. That's why I said that. that. that that's yeah. why I, I think so he, he, wanted like he wanted them to fuck the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Heads up with that. Nigga. Yeah, you negate them. What <laughs> nigger? Like, what? Nah, that's why. Like, it's just simple. But that goes to that communication. Absolutely. among black men. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It's just the fact that he made that. He made that very. The that not was and um, not but but and, and that was beautiful communication, right? Because yeah. if you would have said but, I would have not. I mean, I would have understood it in a way because I'm here watching, right. looking at but you. other people. But other people yeah. would be like, so you're trying to say he's wrong, and, and automatically yeah, confrontation. Like, nah, you see what I'm saying? It ain't that. <laughs> so that was beautifully put. But like, yeah, like there's other ways that you can get out of those situations. So going back to what you were saying, yes, I do believe there are people around us. Not saying necessarily in our circles because. You can vet out who you need to mm -hmm. be in your, your direct circle, but mm -hmm. there are definitely people that look at us and talk to us once in a while and see us that 20 years from now, they will the still same. be there. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's it's sad, but everybody can't grow in the same light. Mm -hmm. Some people's growth happens to be where they are. Maybe they're giving back to the community. I don't know. There's a lot of shit they can be doing. And that's what that's what I was going to get at. Because like for me, I'm literally teaching the stuff that we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Like I'm teaching black kids how to communicate with each other mm -hmm. effectively, yep. right? But it's also like this kind of stuff that we're talking about now. I always say like I'm privileged to be able to talk about this because I'm, I'm the only one in my family to graduate from college. But I'm equipped with a different skill set, a toolbox than my siblings. So they're definitely still figuring out like, all right, what do I need to survive? My means of survival are completely different from where they're at. Like they're still in my hometown. And so I'm always just like, what conditions keep them in a space where it's like familiar for them to want to stay there because that's what it is. We like something that we know and we always will go back to that. But then also like what is the scary part about stepping out? Because sometimes if I say anything more than a head nod outside of, or do anything more than a head nod, they're like, Oh, you different. Like even in Philly, I'm gonna be, when I moved there two years ago, they knew I was not from there. They said, Oh, you greeted. You said good morning. <laughs> They're not right. nice. Like right. I'm convinced, New York people are much nicer than Philly people. No, no, we're I'm not. Be honest. Mm. No, 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 no. I don't, don't, don't let, don't let the sum of us fool you. Oh, okay. Because I was like, because you gotta remember, Philly is that small piece right yeah. of Pennsylvania. You gotta account for five boroughs of these motherfuckers. Absolutely. And then, and then you gotta account for Yonkers. And then you gotta account for Long Island. Then you gotta account. Well, I don't. Anything outside of that, I really don't start acknowledging. So, yeah. You know, at that part. Yeah, when you start looking at that large number, yeah. But, but even with me, right? Like, I had to make... I've, I've spoke about this on the podcast before. Like, I've made it uh, um, a point to greet people. Yeah. Black people, I do not know. Or, like, if I'm walking down the street, if I'm coming back from getting my juice on Nostrand, and, and I, I come back on my block, and I see some older black people out, or younger black people out, what's going on? Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Just, we'll be walking down the street. I see some old heads at on the block. What's going on, OG? Yep. Everybody good? And I and that's a lot of West Indians in Flatbush, so you know they'll they'll be like, hmm? but they'll still greet back. <laughs> that's what it is. The, the, you know the the young people, you know, it catches them off guard, especially you know. Um, let me talk to you about this part of the black male greeting. Mm -hmm. Now, when black men are greeting women, yeah, what is the history behind that? Because it's it's it, that is that 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 yeah. can be. Dicey. Dicey. Yes. To say the least. Yeah. Um, it's funny. So, like, when we're greeting black women specifically, that's who we we're talking about. But um, that's all we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what we I, don't greet I the assumed women. right away. Yeah. I said, mm, I'm, I'm not this podcast. No, not over here either. We're mm -mm. good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a little different because we there's a space where we want to uplift um, and be like, hey, queen, good morning. How you doing? Beautiful. You da, get da, your da, ass. Da, da. You get your throat slit now. Okay. Doing that. And it's also just knowing, I think part of it is understanding how to read a room because, yes, there is part of us that says, like, yo, I want to um, greet you. I right. want to be respectful. I want to mm -hmm. do these things. But I also have to acknowledge that there's potentially, like, a pain there, too, where you're just like, oh, just another nigga just trying. Like, what does he want? You got a question. And so I think for us, in a space of uplifting, 
we can also recognize just socially sometimes we look at black women as like we can own them in a sense but then also another part of it is like oh I want to be respectful because we still most most times we like look at our mothers in that kind of sense as mm. well. So it's just like, all right, what is my relationship to my mom and how I navigate how I'm going to approach women? What is my na- what is my navigation with women that I can potentially be romantically involved with? That's going to be another beast when you're like working. So I think it's hard and I think women now are becoming a lot more emboldened and being able to kind of assert themselves still trying to think about their safety and whatnot in these spaces but really just be like now nah, i'm good off of that like some of my friends they don't trust black men who come up to them and be like hey queen how you doing mm. they tired of it right, and i right, have a right. lot of black women friends and they're just like yeah no i'm not banging with that like but it's like what you want to hear sometimes nothing Right. Oof, Sometimes, that's and big. that's a that's a fact. Like my roommate, that's my best friend. I know her since six, since the sixth grade. She's just like, yes, there are times where there is definitely like respect and environment, but I think it's also like, oh, it's also a safety thing too. So like, if she doesn't respond, is she gonna get? It's not a. Dis- she's gonna yeah, be safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if she does respond, does that make it open for other men on the block to respond? Because like the niggas on the stoop, if they are, if she's walking by herself. Down by the bodega, she's just like, now nope, I keep my pepper spray in hand and I just walk and I beat line it, mm. right? Whereas like I walk down the block and they're like, "Yo, teach, how you doing? You good, bro?" Like mm-hmm. da 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 da. Two different, different approaches whole different on approaches. how they address both of us, and that's that's such an interesting part because I'm like, we have two completely different experiences with those men on the block, absolutely. And that's that's to me, I always have to be cognizant of that. Like even if I'm walking down the block or if I'm walking behind somebody, I cross the street if necessary. But I think that communication breakdown sometimes is like it's we have to be aware of a safety component, but mm-hmm. we also have to be aware of like that respecting that we know our intent might be good, but the impact might land completely different. And yeah. we have to just like sit with that a little bit and not take it as a personal thing, but we have to kind of start navigating. Oh, why is that a thing? Is there something that could have happened to her that she may have right. been like, "Ooh, I don't trust that necessarily." They're walking around with all these triggers, and you yeah, know, traumas, and it's also like traumas, the, yeah. you can't even trust the nice guys anymore. Like the nice guys always want something. Shit, you couldn't the trust them too. before. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> couldn't trust them before. Yeah, try to tell you us fuck boys was doing. I'm just playing. Look, I'm just kidding. Look, I'm just kidding. Look, <laughs> but, but I'm not really. But yeah, so I hope I answered that. It was a long roundabout way, but <laughs> no, no, yeah. it was not. First of all, no, it was not roundabout. It was. The exact reason I brought you here because I knew you would be able to speak to all facets, right? Yeah. And I knew that the conversation would be so smooth because you are like it's fluid, right? Yeah. You're you're being able to go <laughs> to move from okay, this is where it, this is why it's this way, but this is the backstory behind yeah. it, right? Like even just that, I really want to talk about because I don't think we understand. I don't some men, right? So there's gonna be some listen that listen to this podcast and like, what the fuck is Mouse talking about? Like, what the fuck is he on right now? Like. The black, like, I, it really hit me in that line, like, yo, the black male green, it really isn't just a, a high or buy, like, no, <laughs> everything is different compared to, like, you, like, perfect example, you talk about Philly, right, Beano's downstairs recording, Corey was here last week, if you watch the way they dap each other up, they shake each other's hand, mm-hmm. Phil, niggas in Philly don't dap, they shake each other's hand. Which is to me, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Very business like. It's very business like, yeah. and it, these, these are niggas that are busting street moves, and it's like, hmm, mm-hmm. that's that's different. Yeah, you know, uh, people in the Bronx might say this, and and people in Brooklyn might say that, and it's like, each one of these things can be not, you know, not to take it to the extreme, but each one of these nuances could be the difference between life and death. Yeah. Each one of these nuances for women when black men are greeting them can be the difference between life and death. And so I kind of want us to be able to have the conversation to be able to maneuver these things, I guess, in a utopian world, like universally, right? That's a fact. And I think it's always interesting because even if you go back to Obama, how they essentially were like, oh, you code switched your John. Like you said, you went to the white guy, shook his hand, and then you dabbed up the black people. Right. Like when you saw them. Fire. Right? Yep. right. Every single time. Just it's fire. <laughs> so good. But it's also funny because even when I was growing up, though, depending on what neighborhood I was in, depending on like how I had to adapt people up. So like if I dap somebody up and I ended off like that. Yeah, you in the game, bro. We ain't doing that. You getting like, beat on? Hey, hey, nope. Yeah, that was no. six four. We knew. I said, mind my business, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I what that shit was. Cr- um, the universal dap is really wild. 
Yeah. Mm. Like each thing. If I shake your hand like this. Yeah, oh yeah, smoke. That's the jigger that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, smoke. I want I, I want to If I do this and, and you try to bring it in and hold you and at I, bay. And I hold you like this, <laughs> yep. it's like what is that? You, you like hold your hold your side. Or if I just give you the you like, yo, what's going on? I mean, COVID especially now. When this you go is, hit. Yeah. Especially when you reach when out you reach and I'm out, like, what's going on? What's going on? That's yeah. like so then now everybody's minds, I think, turn when that happens, and it, and it goes from like, oh, I'm just trying to say what up to like, what's up with you? Like, what's what's fact. wrong with you? And it could be nothing wrong, like you said. It could be traumas before. It could be like, yo, I don't like people getting too close to me. Is there I an entitlement be, behind that? I think, like, if I'm going to dap my hand out and you dap me with the fist, is there an entitlement on my behalf saying you should you should put your hand in my hand? I feel like it depends on the person. I adapt to other people. Like yeah. if that's what y'all good for, I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll that's meet you what I don't. I don't, I don't cool. think. I don't think too much in it unless you, unless you jig it at me. Then I'm just like, and I know you. Then it's like, yo, yeah, it gotta be him. Then it's like, yo, what is that? I just don't need to fuck. Like, what that's is what's up? It's like when you go walk by another black person and you give them the nod and they don't nod back. Like, I've definitely not nodded back sometimes because sometimes I feel like people just do it just because they want to be included. I think like. There's sometimes where it's not just a like a walk by, cool, head mm-hmm. nod. But then some people might just do it and then linger into what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like Oh, I don't like that. No, see that, what I'm that's saying? Weird. That's so when weird. in my mind, in my in my mind, if it's somebody random on the street that I know is like, oh, he just wants to feel comfortable, like let you know, like, I got you, you got me. We walk in the same block, we both safe. How you doing, brother? There's that, and then there's like me and my friends around, you look over and somebody's trying to just and it's like, I look like this. I'm gonna be honest. I don't trust anybody who goes like that. I I think that's a little weird. I think that's for white people or non-black again, people again, when again. they go like you know, the, <laughs> not up, you, you know, like if you're yeah, we've kind of uh, moved. Past I mean, it. I don't like, know. When we were kids. Me, it was a thing. It was for me, oh, yeah. I might I, I, I might was, do this. Yo. I still might do this. I might not do this all the time. Just what's good? I mean, I do this to like you do this. Yeah, what's good? I do this to us, like because yeah. we know each yeah, other. I'll be like, especially if I'm being cool. like, especially if I'm being shady, right? We'll be in somewhere. I'll be like, alright. <laughs> and Ryan, Ryan will do this Ryan will do this shit right here Ryan be like <laughs> Yo that's the shit Like if you see me do this And you look And you see Ryan do Just know we just made A, a shady connection uh, Cause but, I know Cause me and my boys We do the same thing You heard, you heard that bullshit Like Now we won't say nothing Like I'll be like this Like you'll probably see it Tonight at Biggie's Like we're gonna be We're gonna be at Biggie's And I'll probably I'll see someone Somebody and I'll be like Yo Ryan I already know what you're talking about And I'll just be like And he'll just be like Mm-mm. You should do going. that shit but I, but I guess It's 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 to me to acknowledge that this might not be cool to people. Cause I never another place that could be beef. I never thought that. Yeah. But I don't come with the suck. Like I don't. I'm. It's just you walking the street. But yeah, I guess I, I don't know. That's how it's it just is the for way. Me. I honestly, saw like when I got to college and I saw all the white people doing it. They said, "Oh, yo, bro." I, mm, nah, but I don't. I don't acknowledge nothing white. So that part. Like, like if they do that, I go like this. Yeah, you got fish chair right up. Like, uh, I, I, I tap right up like yo, chill. Watch, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Like what's up? You gotta, you gotta go like this. Hey, got your tongue. Got your tongue. Watch. Stupid what's ass up? nigga. Like I don't. So if you do this to me and you're white, it's just you oh, might as stare at them. I'm you might as well just keep it. Like, like you might as well just keep it because I'm gonna be like yo, something wrong with your neck. Yep. So have you got okay? Okay. Yes. Yes. I want to ask this before I ask the next thing. So in in that in in talking about. White people, unfortunately, and yeah, and like sorry. our interact. That's fine. And our interaction <laughs> with them. You spoke about code switching before Obama in that way. Yeah. What is that? Right. What is the reason? What's the science behind the code? Like, what is the science behind like if I, if somebody was to see Ryan and be like, "Yo, my nigga was good," and then see I don't know like Adam and be like, "Hey, bro," <laughs> like what's that? Like what is that? What is that code switch? What's the science behind that when in, in greetings? Like somebody's whole demeanor can you know, there's no more of that that laggy bop. It's now it's you kind of hey bro, what's, like what is hey, that? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Um yeah, no, that multiple things. Um so it's giving talent and tenth, W. E. B. Du Bois. So like here, Break that down for us. Here's the bougie mm, black. Yeah. French blacks. The boys is <laughs> definitely bougie. Yeah. yeah. So these were like the middle upper class blacks who were trying to the essentially slick back. like Yeah, yeah, yeah. They choo-choo. Um, but they were trying to like avoid the stereotypes that yeah. um the black fa- blackface and um, menstrual shows were yeah. doing. So they were just like, "Oh, we are not what they are portraying us to be," mm-hmm. and because we have attained a certain level of wealth, we don't have to be that. So we're not going to adapt to that. So we can do what we want. Yeah. Like so we- nowadays we would look at them and be like, "Oh, you either the bougie black, the brunch black, the Oreos." That's what we would look at them as. Be like, "Oh, you are, you're different from the rest of us." Um, whereas. 
like for us that switch up sometimes is a survival mechanism sometimes mm. it's a i just want to fit in and assimilate to whiteness as much as possible because that's where i see the most of power is going to be at like that's a very real thing but i know like a lot of times they're just like make sure you cross your t's dot your eyes everywhere you go so for a lot of us it's a trauma response if we really just break down like where yeah, that's i was told, at, I was told like, recently to dot my t's and watch my eyes that too New shit, <laughs> exclusive remix. Look, I'll tell you this, that was a, that was a black greeting I didn't enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, watch your eyes sometimes, you know. Some niggas <laughs> just be looking too much. Up here, up here. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like that shit. My look, look, look when, he, when, when he told me that shit, I said, "Yeah, exactly." <laughs> I did a rhyme. Hmm? You just gotta let niggas know sometimes. You feel me? Because if you it don't, is. it's all about communication. Because if you don't communicate, then op- the door is open. Yeah, mostly what we're talking for about for miscommunication. Today is, but we also talk about nonverbal communication today, mostly. Yeah, like, facts. how are we talking or whatever? And I think that's really what it is at the end of the day. But is like I, I, I don't mean to cut you okay. off. Well, I hate when people say that. I do mean to cut you off, but not in a rude way. It's fine. Because I just wanted to keep us on track on what you was. Because you said there was yeah. multiple reasons for oh, that code switch, and I, I didn't want to lose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one is a tool of survival. Yeah. So we're just trying to make Shit. sure. Okay. Forget who he is sometimes, but <laughs> come back. Bring it back. Kick. What? Okay. I forgot. <laughs> Look. Uh, tool of survival um, Cause this is how We have to navigate Certain spaces Especially if we have to be Forced to be around white people Like right. I'm not actively around white people Until I walk into that school building And I'm just like ah. Where'd you went to school If you can tell If you don't mind saying. Oh I was in Central Pennsylvania Okay uh, Yeah Susquehanna University um, Yeah I went to a white school yeah, Big white mm, Purdue yeah, Big white yeah, Private the liberal white? arts Nah public <laughs> Big white. Public. I'm so sorry. Yo, white. Big white is low. crazy. <laughs> like you know, like the little house on the prairie. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. big house on the river. Oh, that's not bad, man. We had like mountains, rivers. Yo, I ain't gonna hold you. I know there had to be some five black joints at your schools, though. First of all, how many people went to your school? Twenty two hundred. Okay, seventy thousand, including graduate school. No fire black 40, joints. You could no fire it's a couple, and I knew them, but there's probably some other ones that I never saw in. All the years of my college Like experience My school is the type of school That you could see somebody First semester And you can never see them again oh. You said 70,000? It's Well it's 45 undergrad And then I think graduate school Is like another 25,000 yeah. Or something like that So yeah that's, just, that's literally the size of a Small town Big town Big town That's a big rich town yeah. <laughs> So so yeah So I didn't <laughs> So being in a state That the KKK was yeah. Founded in Founded in, in Indiana that white shit really and and I'm different. I'll say this because I've I've lived a lot of places. I've been around white people. Mm-hmm. I've done all that stuff. I so choose. My brother's not. a biracial. Yeah, yeah, I know some good. I've fun, chose. You know. I've chose. <laughs> my brother looks biracial, but um, I've chose. Uh-uh. I've chose not to Mm-mm. to go towards it just because I've seen the 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 the. the I've seen the nasty ways it can be and I've seen mm-hmm. so much of people not knowing about us yeah. and really not educating themselves on the people that they they really truly want to be. Because yeah. at the end of the day, everybody want to be yeah, a nigga like until it's time to be a nigga. Yeah. That, so yeah. it's like, they want to be us and they want to act us and they want to do everything, play sports, do all the shit that we do amazingly because we took everything. Yeah. And we're going to keep taking shit because it's ours. Like we see, we but see how they don't going. acknowledge it and they don't know how to communicate with us. So they'll never be that. If white people could really communicate like if we could start the world over and everybody was really like there was yeah, there was different colors but niggas could really just talk to each other and like communicate yo and it it, w- it didn't become a black and white thing there was there was black people and white people living together but then there was other black and white people that didn't like that like and it was just like a a true world then I feel like this shit would be I mean everybody should feel that way it would be amazing but that's not the way the cookie crumbled no not at all so in my sense, it's like like we always say, we got to unlearn that shit. And being in Indiana and you being in Pennsylvania and doing all that shit, like we understand like when you walk into that room and mm-hmm. you're the only black person there and how they communicate with no words to you. Okay. What, yeah. and, and what are those greetings like? Where you, with the where stairs. You, where that, kinda yeah, like, their yeah, heads don't like, really move. It's not the up or the down. It's just no, the... It's just a, like a, and a, then it's the look to the left like... Like like we don't know. It's like how he... You know, you know what I hate? I hate when they do this. I hate when the crackers do this. They go... <laughs> Oh, I hate that shit so bad, bro. Oh my Cause gosh. then I'd be like this. I'd be like, cunts. That's what we call them. Yeah, you, you gotta say that because it, it really yo, crackers. Like, like we was talking about with 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 Kid Fury, cunt has the white women in a chokehold. Yes, I hate that word so much. You should love it. Why? It the, you I should, just think it's such like an ugly exa- word. Exactly. I don't. Exactly. I don't white care white for women, it. Exactly. It makes white women shrivel up. When we yes. say when we oh, say absolutely. crackers, they just be like, nah. Cool. But you hit yeah. it with that cunt. They're like, 
Oh. Ah! So sometimes, sometimes you gotta have you gotta have words like that in your arsenal just to not. You don't even gotta use them. You just gotta know. Like, look, I know you think you can trigger me, but I know what will trigger you. Like, listen, yes. listen here. I tell you this: if you say nigga, I'm gonna whoop your ass. Yeah. But if I say cunt, you gonna cry. Yeah, there's a difference. So which Big one difference. you want? So. Which one? We should What's just really go good? on about our day. Want candy? I'm, I'm my business. Or you, you want candy or what? <laughs> Love. <laughs> 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 but yes, yeah, is, there, is there any more to that too? Yeah, so okay. the survival method, mm-hmm. um, that's going to be something, especially when we have to navigate these white spaces whether or non-black spaces, that's how I'll put it, um, whether we want to or not, um, because there's still a level of success and a little bit of power that comes with us being able to equip ourselves. Mm-hmm. I can say juxtapose and then nigga at the same time. Mm-hmm. And they'd be, they'd be like, wait, what? How are you doing this? Mm-hmm. Um, but also just think about professional settings. I work in a school, so there's always like this idea of code switching. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I think it's just to make sure like economically we're still in power. Um, then also socially, people still want to have this idea of respect. So until we are able to fully be comfortable in blackness outside of just like what we're fed blackness is supposed to be, then we're never going to get anywhere. So code switching is always going to be a thing. Other times it is just like, Oh no, I have to talk like this so I can like just get by. Mm. Like that's all I need to do. Just so I'm going to make sure this mm-hmm. is safe. I can get home. This person's not intimidated by me. Cause sometimes niggas just really be trying to mind their business. But if I'm, if I talk like how I regularly talk rather than like, Hey, how's it going? Like you okay. We're good. Smile at you. To walk by to notice, like, this is a sense of safety. I stopped smiling at white people on the street. I grew my hair out because I said, oh, y'all didn't think I could still be professional, run circles around y'all academically, and still have, like, my hair the way that it was. So a lot of the stuff that I started doing as I got older was like, nah, I'm going to be me. Before, I kept my hair cut real low mm-hmm. all the time because I was like, the oh, this is respectable. Look. Yeah, the respectability yeah. politics. Yeah, all of that. So I was just like, I'm going into space. This is my first time out the hood, so I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just like, I just want to get by. I made it. Like, <laughs> that's it. Um, so sometimes it is that. So once again, survival, um, sometimes a trauma response, and sometimes niggas is just bougie. So that's <laughs> really what it is. I love this guy. I'm not going to hold you guys at home. I really love this guy. <laughs> like, I don't know if we've ever had a show where, like, we ask questions and they get answers in such a politically correct a, poli- a politically correct way but uh, also like a politically jarring way yeah. too like the way he just it's like nigga, you're, you're, yeah, <laughs> nigga right, right 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 it's just sharp you're so yeah. sharp wow educated educated black yeah. i'll tell you this the most underrated person in the world is an educated black man why say that we're the most dangerous in the we're world we're the most dangerous but we're the most overlooked cuz yes. cuz cuz white people think just cuz we get an education we're just still the same like you gave us the power to get educated the thing that you held over us forever, mm-hmm. mm. you sitting there like what I'm saying. We went to these predominantly white schools and we in these yeah. classrooms. They're like, "You're not gonna make it. You're gonna flunk out." You're oh, gonna... I got the question. How'd you make it outside? I, of, outside no, of the, the number one writing, question I get that? is, Do you, "You went to Purdue? Wow, did you graduate?" Mm-hmm. The number one is, "Did you graduate, nigga? Did you?" Right. Like half of y'all don't. Like the majority of the black people that go to these schools graduate. Ninety something mm. percent of us get the fuck out of there because we don't want to even be there with y'all. Okay. But we're not gonna go home and be a failure because right. to our families we the be the big ticket. Yeah, we mm. the we the ones that's like he made it. Even though college ain't shit. Right. But to them it's like I, I go back home. They're like summer vacation. They're like yo damn like you over. How was that man? Like and it's like yo it's just the same shit as this. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm actually going through worse shit than y'all going through. You're used to this. You're in a space that you don't want to leave because you're not used to the outside. I didn't want to leave. Yeah, I necessarily I did want to leave. Right. I might have not wanted to leave in that aspect or go to that mm-hmm. place. But I ended up there and I made the best of my opportunities and I did. That's it. a fact. The people were just excited to know like I got to school. Facts. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, if I really think about it, if I didn't want to be a professor by the time I was like thirty five, I wouldn't have went to school. I went to school for theater and video production. <laughs> like that's what I went to school for. No, you give that. So look. I was just like, cool. But I got my four years. I'm suddenly in education now. But ultimately, I said, yeah, I'll be Dr. Keith at some point in time. But Dr. Keith, that's fine. Yeah, that's I don't want to use my last name. I'm just no, saying, no, 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 no. Just saying that Dr. <laughs> Keith, that's fine. Like, yeah. because it's, you know, I love when we live, but in living, it's protest. Mm-hmm. I love it. Right. Because typically you're not going to hear you. You know, you would use it. Did you say your government name on here already? Oh, Marquise Richards. OK, Marquise so Devon like is you typically I, you would hear Dr. Marquise. Yeah. Right, so that's letting you know, like I'm black, but I'm a doctor. Yeah, but Dr. Keys, I'm still in. Yeah, yeah. That's my job. Like, and I love seeing those pictures every 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 semester of the graduating mm-hmm. black doctors. And you be like, yo, I gotta find out how to go. Right, I try to get one of them Harry Potter robes, low key. Like, 
Just let me know. What I'm a Harry like, Potter robe. Oh, that's the one you that, graduated. That's the dress that they be wearing. With the- <laughs> I said, that one robes be fire. I thought they'd be sweating in them. <laughs> That's, That's funny say. Cause I was like You know I'm a Harry Potter head I'm like Wait what <laughs> <laughs> I need to be went At the graduation I, Maybe I should've Went to school Hogwarts <laughs> You wanted to go to Hogwarts I know you yeah, did Yeah I would've been Slytherin you already know. Oh I'm a Ravenclaw We out here Alright uh, y'all lost me fuck I watched a couple of movies That's fine But yeah. I, I'm not Let's binge them No Let's binge them for the people I don't know Let's do a binge No I don't let's, wanna let's binge watch White one. movies Let's watch one How about that There's black people in it How many no, he's not. Exactly. Yeah, I just see a black person. The shadows. There's, there's one. W- one. He was on How to Get Away with Murder, and then he got killed. See? Yeah. On both shows. He didn't get killed. The on blackest the thing is the shadows it, of them no. shits that just be. F- and I like them. Okay. Cool. And they be fucking niggas we, up. The shadows be knock. Can we binge watch some black shit? Let's do it. What do you want to do? I don't know. All right. Just, I'm, I'm gonna hold you. Any, any movies you would love us to uh, binge watch or, or something? Movies. Black. Black. Movie? ATL. Let's do a mash. We got We have to do like if we do ATL, then we have to just go through the lines of shit like around. Nigga, I know. I literally know the entire script. I would really like. like I know we're doing this new episode on you know what we're doing mm-hmm. it on, but I would love to do some spins on and do movies too. Mm. I think y'all would be funny, like just doing like commentary we, and like response. We did things. one episode <laughs> where we did where are they now. That's and like our like that's people's like most favorite episode. Oh no, like I know. Hot, and, and I'm, we, a, I'm also a fan. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw y'all a couple years ago. Like oh, Richella, yeah, yeah I'm a listener. The, uh, he said he was at the uh, Roots picnic, the Roots picnic show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, black uh, male uh, greeting. Uh, you know, uh, humility, humility by proxy. Bla- black fine. male greeting there. Uh, <laughs> let me ask but, you about this <laughs> before we go further. Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm. You know, I. I am. The wordsmith of the podcast, but I am without this word. What is the opposite of a greeting? The opposite of a greeting? Yeah, like like, a, like when you're leaving someone, like a what is that called? Is there a word? A, a see you later, a goodbye. Yeah, like what? Is, what all right, what? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. What I'm trying to get at is the way black men say speak to each other when they do that, right? Oh, There's always, and I, I noticed it between me and Ryan. Yeah, but we also grew up, and we also. Have similar experiences, almost goddamn like sim- same experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know we're like, yo, be safe, bro. Yeah, oh, but yeah, like, I'm, a, taxes, I'm a, get you know, home safe, text me when you get home. Taxes is huge for be safe, though. Yeah, and you know, obviously, people try to make free tax by way, but people try to make it whatever they try to make it. But you know, it starts from somewhere, mm-hmm. and literally, you see black men. They may not know each other. We might just be on the street, be like, "Hey, brother, be safe. All right, be safe." Yes, absolutely. I've never ever in my fucking life, <laughs> I be yo, I be having these outbursts on this podcast. I'm so sorry. All about, all right. I'm not sorry, but you know, you know what I meant. <laughs> yo, I've never heard a fucking cracker look at another one and say, "Be safe." They don't care about each other. Get home. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm not gonna put it that far. I think they do. Here goes the other part. They don't have to worry about being safe. That part. They know they're going to get home. Yes. And the only thing that's going to stop them from getting home is an act of God or a serial killer. Mm-hmm. Us? Yeah, we're telling each other to be safe for a fucking reason. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I do it all the time. That's my biggest thing. Y'all better text me when you get home. And I know the friends who be forgetting the text, so I text them as a follow-up. <laughs> like, <laughs> before y'all niggas go to sleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> you better text me back. Um but yeah, no, I think, again, that's a space of trauma, but it's also a space of like how we also grow up as a community, too. I always say, like, I think black people are actually like the actual nuclear families. Mm. I don't think white people are the nuclear families because we actually are very much more communal. Well, they'll be in extinct our- in a little bit anyway. You no, know, that's that part. We out. Bye. <laughs> I, I'm just saying because they all want to, you know, they just want some of the sauce we got over here. That's it. They Look, I'll tell you about my. Head. I'll tell you about my roommates' theory on white people, how they the actual aliens. Like, but they are. But yes, yeah. No, a- ain't nobody. Born they can't in survive still that white. They no, can't. No, no, no. They can't survive on any land that they go to. They, they about, niggas and indigenous people have to help them everywhere they go. They try to take. They, well, they don't try. They've taken our shit. Yes. And now it's just to get back. That's all it is. Him so We'll said, get back to. So you said. Uh, you said. Black people are, are the nuclear family. You say we're way more yeah, communal. I think, yeah. So we're. So I want to just read this tweet that I, I tweeted it, but it's a quote from uh, Taryn. Um, damn, what is Taryn's last name? Oh, Taryn, Taryn Finley. Finley. Yeah, 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 Taryn Finley uh, from HuffPost. Yep. That's my homegirl. She's a great writer. She said, uh, she, was, she was speaking and she said, one thing about black people, we grieve in communal spaces. Yes. So when you said that just now, I was like, 
So like when you hear shit come together, yeah, like, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's a fact, though, because um, for us, no matter what. Um, we all collectively know how to grieve. Like when we lose somebody that we're not even familiar with, where we don't always subscribe to American individualism. I talk about black American, black American specifically. Just, like, speak, just speak to what that is for the listeners at home. Yeah. So American individualism, it really focuses on like how I am out for self. I'm going to worry about me. And sometimes I worry about mine, but Americans are very much so like, let me get my stuff together before actually going out and actually helping other people. Again, it's capitalism, it's all that extra stuff, but I'm in competition no matter what, so I don't got to give a fuck about you or you, right? Um, but for us as a community, like I said, the niggas on the stoop saved me from the cops last summer. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, no, you got the wrong black guy. Like, that's not the guy you're looking for. I said, so y'all know who he's looking for, so I feel like y'all dry snitch, but whatever. Uh, but I appreciate it. Man, you want to get the hell Okay, just got to go. <laughs> I went right back to my students. Um, but yeah, so that was like part of it, but also for us, like, we don't just have like mom, dad, brother, sister, dog. We got there. mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, play uncle, play aunt, godfather, godmother, god brother, god sister, god dog, yeah. god dog, god, <laughs> god dog, everything, god dog, god, god damn, got friend of the family, <laughs> everything, got play uncle, the dog. grandmas, your grandpa, you multi generational home. Growing homes. up the way we grew up, you got your ball. Like I got my my. My barber whooped my ass. Yeah. Like growing up, my barber. And, my barber and was my barber. babysitter. And that's, yeah. And that's why. <laughs> yo, real shit. But, but that's why sitter. in a black like, community, we, 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 like, I was, uh, my mom is just me. She's a single mother. Mm-hmm. Um, I have siblings for my dad, but your community is your family. Yes. That's who raises you. That's why, what, what's the shit? Uh, Village. village yeah that yeah. that, village that, that raise, thing yeah. that thing um <laughs> a lot of these a lot of these other well lot, white people just don't be having that shit it'd be their mom their dad their brother sister but they, they, they yeah. also don't need it but it's i think it's also different though because they're very much like they do need it that's why they, they ain't shit now no i think yeah. i think i think it would be worse right imagine the white people that you're thinking about right and they existed in these pods right mm-hmm. they, it's mom it's nuclear family yeah. mom dad brother sister and they're already shitty now imagine if they were around their other shitty family members. But in my mind, I'm not necessarily going negative when I say when I say that. I'm thinking, yeah, like when we have cousins that live in the South, we have yeah. this, we know how we see how everything else is okay, this how these people are nicer over here, yeah. this mm-hmm. over there. So I feel like if there's a negative household, like your mother and your father, this, I'm hopefully thinking their cousins that live in another state, they might be around other people. Black people more So they might be able To teach them more Rather than If it's just hate in your house You go back to your hate Every day There's no summer vacations Nowhere else You're just with that Hateful family Mm -hmm. Y'all are traveling together With your hateful ways There's no like other. I'm thinking more In a positive light Which could be over there Now Could it be Just as fucked up over there Absolutely But I'm just giving it Kind of a little space For it to be a little light So you haven't seen um, Like we Me and you We We and, I, I, and I'm not icing you I'm just oh, saying Me and him specifically We eat healthy right You ever had a drink You ever drink The, the chloroform water Maybe So you know Like you have a cup of water mm-hmm. Just water It's transparent Oh you water. put chloroform you, you put the chloroform in, And what happens I, oh, It now it, becomes oh, That's what I think about When I think about White people's inherent racism I think just the drop of that Even if you have mm-hmm. somebody That is like Oh I know good black people Well that means You're saying like You know black Like bad but what, black But what people. if like But what if like and I hate. I don't even want to be on their side. But Go let's ahead, just man. let's just for point. You've had sake. more experience. So yeah, I, for yeah, point sake. What if that one aunt that lives in whatever mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. like she got a black man or or she's around her circle is black and you go over there and every summer you go spend time with them and it's like I know what y'all but when you here this is what we do I'm taking you here you going around my boyfriend black and all that what if there there is a chance of that especially in today's society so like you, you know said how- he has biracial brothers and sisters. They're, so they're not white. They focus on their blackness a little bit more. Absolutely, but whiteness. but what but what are they? When you get that DNA test, no, they're biracial, but they're not white, right? What, so what? they're not accepted by white people. It I'm just, just saying overall. I'm just saying. No, like, no, 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 no. It depends on how you look. No, and right. it depends on where the biracial person is, because like there's like logic black biracial, and then you have like J Cole biracial. There's two different biracials that are in there's here. Two there's two different biracials. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. I, I like how you did that. That's, that's really good. I mean, if we go deeper, it's totally different because logic shit was a. He went to, 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 That was some shit 
I mean, so did Cole. If you listen to those early, if you listen to yeah. like those early projects, he was yeah. going through some. Yes, shit. but I just think he was raised. That man's like, that man's mom, mom is yeah was racist. Yeah, and had a baby with a black, black guy. Man. Yeah, that is a whole nother there ball. Was, they, yeah, there was some like incest. She was yeah, yeah she was shit, calling yeah. him nigger. Yeah. yeah, and shit growing up. I don't know. I don't. I could be wrong. J Cole's one of my favorite rappers. I could be wrong, but I don't think. No, he was just like broke and like what? Yeah, yeah. Mom the, the, go the, the some black shit, shit. The, the nigga shit. But the thing is. And obviously he doesn't know he wouldn't he, he wouldn't have this answer because he only was raised with a white mom. But I'm like, that does that then does that experience affect him as a black man a little differently growing up and seeing your single white mom poor than it would us as black men growing up seeing our black mom poor? Yes. Right? Because in America you have this like white people win at the end of the day. You know, you see every movie, the white woman figures it out. Like it, yes. every movie, the but, white woman but we're, figures we're it out. Talking so, about, right. We're talking about the, the East Coast and the South. The South is a totally different place. There's a lot more poor white women. There's a lot more South. poor Absolutely. white women. There's a lot yes. more poor white women that, that go towards, but there's a lot of white women that go towards black males. Well, we know. They all got the same kind of cut and everything like that. Oh, so <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about the, the plant. The, asymmetrical. That's, we call that the plant cut. Oh, because you work at the plant. Work at the plant. Okay. That was smooth. Yeah. But yeah, no. I think that's like that's a real valid experience, but I think it is a definitely a different level of socialization. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, one of my good friends, he's biracial. His mom is white. My mom, my biracial kids. I'm kids, not my, whoa, 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 not kids. Siblings. We were talking about this last week about feeling like we raised our kids. Look, Sky okay, daddy, that part. Um, <laughs> but my younger siblings, like for them, they have a black mom. Our, we all have the same mom, so. Two different ways on how we approach black Your people. Your mom had a baby with a white man. I don't want to talk about it. Man, me like neither. It, yeah, my dad's Puerto Rican, so like we're good. He's from the black side of Puerto Rico, so we like. Okay, yeah, they'd be, um, they be like, "Me no black, yes you are, nigga." No, no, me no, me no black, yes the fuck <laughs> yes, you, you are. So you He's blacker than me. Door. You okay. darker than me. Yeah, Roberto. Okay. Well, um, Rob didn't like what I called him Roberto. He was like real funny mouse. <laughs> 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 like yeah, I see your Puerto Rico is showing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Shout out my nigga Rob Clap it up for Rob one time Don't get, don't get Rob started He was throw the Frank right at you Yeah he about throw the Frank He looking at me like Bink <laughs> Yeah but it's a different level of um, Care that you have with um, How you navigate your people Cause I think black women Will always make sure like Yo I still navigate from a safe From a space of safety So mm. I want to make sure that you are all good And know at least you are around your people And how to be respectful to black women a little bit more than where white women could also socialize their kids to resent black women because there's always like that inherent competition kind of situation. Um, I forget what the initial question was, but what so it was about, about no, that's fine. It, it was just about the way black men leave one another. Yeah. And so is that be safe thing? Like, Oh, and then we got yeah. to the nuclear yeah. family and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm actually reading this book right now by a black woman called how we show up. And actually there's a lot of, um, who wrote that? Mia birds. Yes. Yeah. So really, really dope um, kind of idea on how we look at community, how we talk to each other, but also non-black people crave our kind of family and communal nature mm. because at the end of the day, I think about like Frank Ocean, super rich kids. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you probably raised by your nanny. <laughs> you probably raised by your man. You actually don't have like a personal connection, which is probably gets to a lot of their anger and their loneliness that they actually experience. But like, portray onto us project onto us um but i think that's definitely like a switch on how it works i know my grandma i know my grandfather i know my uncles all of that if I, my mom couldn't do something she was able to go to them if she decided to like let stuff out because you know niggas keep their secrets mm -mm, but mm -mm, mm -mm, <laughs> for the most part we all will always have a um, fail safe no matter what so i think that's also like a different part that it plays but i just make sure like yeah, mom, you good? You need anything? You safe? You good? Cool. Anything with my siblings? Same thing. Friends I grew up with. Strangers on the block. My Uber driver, if they're black. All right, bro, be safe. Appreciate you. Keep it going. Like, simple stuff we're, like we're that. We're inherently, bro. like, it's inherent in us to yeah. look out for one another. Yeah. And we'll talk about, especially, you know, I'm in, I'm adjacent to the music industry. Mm -hmm. Ryan is, he's, he's in the music industry yeah. as well as other industries. And, you know, we tend to say a lot because of music we tend to say oh black people don't care about each other no more black people don't care about but it's so sickening that inherently we care like even inherently yeah. we care right like even two niggas that may not fuck with each other the minute they leave one they just it's snap you'll be safe bro it'll, it'll be mm -hmm. safe 
Like that's our thing. Yeah. That's it's our because like, in a sense, it's like we don't gotta fuck with each other. But I know what's outside that door is way worse than the trauma we have between each other. Because we have a shared enemy. We have, exactly. Mm-hmm. We have a shared trauma. Yeah. Which is, and I don't mean to switch it. I won't switch it. But I'm just saying, like, which is also why I say, you know, I don't. I don't really believe in uh, interracial dating, because when we're talking about dating, we're talking about loving somebody. You got to be your most vulnerable. Yeah. And got to feel safe in that person. And I can't feel safe if you at the bottom of this if you can't share. My trauma If we can't share this trauma If if you're not Because what that's gonna do Is if I'm ever pulled over My black woman's gonna say Shut the fuck up And your white lady's gonna start She's gonna start so I'm like top. Yo I'm telling you Shorty has said Give me the gun I mean I'm like man mm-hmm. You're bless, getting a child bless, tonight Bless <laughs> You know <laughs> Bang bang city But like you said She understands A white woman Would know the gun is in the car Drugs is in the back And you pull this over She gonna go to fuck off Unless she got the plant cut No I think I'm even scared Nah the plant cut She might hold it More than down It's mine (laughs) What you gonna do (laughs) Me and all six of my black babies in here (laughs) Cause I know that that you know what I'm talking about. I know that white lady that got six black kids that got a black husband and will ride or die for her for for everything a black. And it's like you don't even have to do this. But thank you, appreciate you, it, appreciate you, you it. it. So there's a couple of the, you know a couple of the plants says. Shout out to the shout out to Plant Patty. <laughs> plant Patty. <laughs> that haircut, you know she fighting for you. Fact. Plant Patricia. <laughs> you know it's over. It's, it's lit. Um, wow. I think we got on. I, I, you got any questions anymore? That's, that's, I think we. I know to not like this. <laughs> I'm like not this. gonna judge you. This I'm hurt. Sorry. This, now that I do I this, just, it kind of hurt back here. I don't know why people was doing it. Oh, I just, said, no, I just, all right, so just, just quick. Maybe I do. Maybe it's just because I'm sitting down. I don't know what I'd be doing. I w- all right. I mean, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this podcast so much, man. Oh man. Um, Listen, man, I, I we appreciate you yeah, uh, pulling up yeah. on us, taking that Breaking hour and a half up here to. I was smooth. I got give me a reason to get out of Breaking. Philly. I'll be honest. Breaker. Um. So yes, we appreciate you. I am pulling up. You know. Um. You know. Uh. The guy next door. Uh. Get the drawers playlist has been sponsored by the good people at Music Breaker. Shout out to them. So we have been putting exclusively on our playlist. Um. Records on the Get to Drugs playlist that come from Music Breaker artists. So if you are a Music Breaker artist, when you see the campaign go up next month, make sure you jump on and you submit your uh, record. Don't submit it through DM because I'm not watching it. I literally delete it. Like I don't even open it. I see it. It's like what? Yeah, you're out of here. <laughs> um, Ryan does the same. Mac does even worse. Um, so yeah, Music Breaker. If you are an artist and you want the chance to be on the Guy Next Door G and D playlist. Then you need to go to musicbreaker.com, M-U-S-I-C-B-R-E-A-K-R.com, make an account, and wait for the campaign. So while we're pulling up these records, tell me, Dr. Keese, to yeah. be, what's on, be what, what, what's on your, uh, what's on your Get the Draws playlist? What's on your, oh, Get yeah, the Draws playlist? Yeah, what's on your GTD playlist? All right, um, so Dixon. If you've been listening to R and B artist yes. Cream, yes, straight fire. That's gonna oh, be you trying right to get there. to it. Okay, yeah, see what's going on with you? Uh, if you want something a little newer, okay, uh, newer, <laughs> it's Intruded. Uh, Justine Sky put out that record recently, and I I've been enjoying that. So Ooh, that's a that recent, was a it's a recent ad. Um, yeah, he giving y'all a um, EP list. High key, Look. high key is to get to draw EP. <laughs> wait, wait for this Marquise. moment. Okay. All right, I ain't mad at it. Not at all. We'll and give you one more. We'll give you one more. One more. Um, Julie by Gallant has mm. been smooth. So. That's new. He put that. It's not new, but no, but yeah, I put, he put it out earlier this year. Yeah, yeah. What you got for us? Um, I don't have anything right now because internet is not working. <laughs> 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 so thanks. No, so uh, thanks there, buddy. You know, there's a lot of good things going on uh, over here at. Well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this to go on my get the draws playlist. Besides the amazing breaker artists that we have, um, I feel like it's a song of summer for me. Um, late at night, Rowdy Rich. That is. I ain't gonna hold you. My song. It's on it. That that it's on that it. is that is my song. 
listen to that at least once, two, three times a day. That record's tough. And um, I appreciate him. And I even appreciate my friend Karuchi. Shout out to Karuchi. She's in the video. And I feel like she's one of the first ever <laughs> to to be featured on a song and not be on the record. The song is Rowdy Ridge featuring Karuchi Tran. <laughs> and to do that is some shit. So shout out to her, my uh, high school friend, still friend to this day, my homie, Karuchi, you did your thing. Song Why she ain't never on the podcast? Well, I'll, show, I'll get her on here one of these days. Oh, fuck out. I, I like to keep my friends kind of away from shit sometimes because <laughs> people like you. What you mean people <laughs> like me? Me and her, had, um, we almost was a thing you said, if it wasn't uh, for the motherfucker. You said, look at your eyes and cross your, what? What was it? He said, no, nah, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Cross don't your do tees and <laughs> watch <laughs> your eyes. Don't watch shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here. I'm not watching shit. <laughs> Watch them goddamn eyes. Listen, but, we will give you four next week because this internet is fucking up. Uh, we will give y'all four next week. We'll give y'all four records next week. Shout out to the good people at Music Breaker. Dan, Timmy, uh, 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 fuck, I'm forgetting the other brother's name, but yeah, three great black brothers from Chicago got together and said we're getting into the tech game. And they, definitely and they are big they in tech. They're doing it. So shout out Absolutely. to Music Breaker. Um, um, Dan, o- Dan always talk about when he, when are they episode when y'all get here. All right, Dan, I know we'll, you're listening. We'll figure it out when Fine. you get here. Like you're but, in um, Chicago, bro. I normally don't do this at all. Oh, um, breaking protocol. I am breaking protocol because do they it. don't pay me. But these uh, three black men reached out to me about okay. they uh, about their brand. They asked for help. I gave them some insight on how they should reach out to people in the future. Mm. So we, I kind of broke down some things that I would do, not saying mm. it's the right things, it's just mm. what I would do, go about mm. things. But um, there are three black men uh, based out of the Midwest, Eric, Brandon, and Mike. They have a, a company called Three Kings Grooming, which is uh, high-end uh, brushes and combs for your beard and do-rags and oils and stuff like that. Um, their up-and-coming business, um, their IG is Three Kings Grooming. Mm. And... Um, they don't know I'm shouting them out. I might not even tell them. I really don't know these guys. They call me just for some advice if I can help them, and this is my advice. My dog. So um, shout out to y'all. That's my mother. And um, fucking dog. y'all know us every Monday. Catch us. New episodes coming soon. Patreon is on deck. Listening letters. Send no shits in. Y'all know where to get us. Uh, guys next door one two three at gmail dot com. Um, don't be cheap. Spend some money. You heard. <sighs> and um. Anything else you want to say? Anything got yeah, going, you got going on? on? You, you want to tell them where to find you? All that stuff. Support you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again, uh, Marquise Davon, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S-E-D-A-V-O-N across all social media in the Twitter streets and Instagram, TikTok, I attempt, but eh, we'll see. Um, yeah, so the Rational Anger Podcast, once again, we're trying to bridge academia in the hood, so we just communicators of you know, high-level Academics. Okay. Um, and then also the Dear Redding Podcast, Dear RDG is how it's stylized. Um, as well so feel free to follow us across all platforms um and then also um yeah so i'm launching my actual visual Speak essay your shit you know okay talk your okay. shit um so i'm dropping a new series um called this american negro which hmm. is um going to be interviewing powerful people words. in philly yeah man powerful yeah. Okay. powerful powerful um so yeah, still a similar idea of bridging academia in the hood, but I want to like really bring in these conversations and stop speaking above people's heads, um, but make it much more visual and then be ready for more um, good morning to niggas and niggas only merch um, to come out because we out here. The mugs are there. They'll be back, um, but expanding into a planner, um, a hoodie and a crew neck for like a back to school kind of feel. Um, so we out here. If y'all feel like it can help with any of these products, hit him up. Um, Please do. He's a black man, educated. He'll educate y'all as long as y'all help. You know? But um, I would ask you what you got going on, but everybody knows Trap Karaoke is almost sold out if it's not sold out. So <laughs> get your tickets if you can. If you can't, DM me. <laughs> <laughs> I got them shits for a nice price. But they did. If you want to <laughs> sing some songs, okay. <laughs> wrap it up. TrapKaraoke.com. Get your tickets from TrapKaraoke.com. And TrapKaraoke.com are only unless you hit and ride. You hit and ride. You might I get the got eco. You. you might get the eco guy. Hey, listen. Uh-huh. This is what I'm going to say. Mm. Whoever is buying a Trap Karaoke ticket. Can we do packages? Can we talk? I'm about to do it. Can we talk to your people over there? Because we Yo, can just. I'm about to do something right now. All right. You ready? My phone, my phone, my phone. Anybody coming to these trap karaoke tickets, if you bought a ticket and you show me proof of an order from Eco Gave Straws 25 or better, 
Don't get out there and order 12. No. 25 or better. You show me your registration. You, know, you show me a confirmation number and your ticket. You get a free ticket. You get a free ticket to any show on tour. That's fire. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. That's how I support my brother. That's, that's how we support Black that's Business. That's fire. So if you are, if you're going to trap karaoke on this tour, if you have a ticket already, and you can show me that you purchased 25 or more Eco Gave straws, you get a free ticket to any other city in the tour. That's fire. Better go buy them fucking straws. Run it up. That's right. Run it up. I know I got a house full of them shit. shit that, <laughs> I got a house full of them shit. I be sipping. Every time I'm around, every time I go to Biggie's, I be stealing them shit. I'm like, mm, that's good. do what you got to do. They just order more. Um, but yeah, that's us. Gather them. Also, the what? The what? Uh, the what? There you go. Shout the what? Hip hop question, legends, and lists um, podcast on Black Effect and iHeart. Um, make sure you listen on iHeart Radio or wherever you listen to podcasts. Shout out to my uh, amazing co host, uh, Nyla Simone. And the team D Block and A King. Make sure you stream all the God Next Door episodes that you might have missed. You might be new to the neighborhood and you might have just moved in and we saying what's up. Um, but we ain't really giving you the, the head nod because, you know what I mean? We don't know you. So make sure you get to know us by listening to all those episodes. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. If you have a question about anything, if you have a funny story you want us to read, um, any of that, send it to God next door one two three at gmail.com. God next door one two three at gmail.com. Now, if it is a question about your funky ass relationship, understand this, okay? Make sure you put your own fake name in the subject line, or Che's gonna read exactly what's in front of her. Then make sure you send a picture of yourself in the suitor or suitors, okay? Because what I don't want to give is ugly advice to good looking people, and I don't want to give good looking advice to ugly people. You know what I mean? Kind of have to keep those separate. You kind of got to, you know, you want to set boundaries, clear boundaries. Um, and on that note, from the bottom of our heart here, in Rob's, suck my dick. <laughs> Sicko.